Good evening and welcome to Friday evening prayer. I nearly said Thursday, but welcome. And I know our dear brother is downstairs wallowing in sheer luxury. Absolutely. So welcome, dear brother Richard. And hello there, Sue. And whoever else is here and not logged in, you're welcome. Now, where's my candle? Here it is. So this evening, <clears throat> we're going to light a candle. And we're going to light it for all the children of God, of all faiths and none. Especially those who've experienced disappointments today. Disappointments that may have had or have far-reaching implications for them. It could be a diagnosis. It could be a medical problem. It could be a neighbour falling out with them or a member of their family. Or maybe news they've been expecting by post that's knocked the ground from under their feet. So we, we lift all intentions here now. And we thank the Lord Jesus for coming into all our lives and for filling and filling us with God's peace. <clears throat> Amen. We begin with our evening prologue of our brother and sister as scenes of Mount Sinai as we pray. We enter the eternal and infinite garden with reverence to the heavenly Father, Mother God, the earthly mother and all the great masters, and reverence to the holy, pure and saving teaching and reverence to the brotherhood and sisterhood of the elect. Friday evening we commune with the angel of the Heavenly Father, Mother God, saying, The Heavenly Father, Mother God and I are one. This communion in time brings union with the eternal and boundless ocean of all superior radiations from all planets as cosmic consciousness is awakened and the individual is finally united with the Supreme Power, our Father, Mother, God. Let us be still. And just as we take a deep breath, we invite, invoke and call upon the Lord Christ, our brother, our teacher, our mentor, our friend, who is the incarnate Son of God. And coming to our little book of Celtic prayers, we read an opening prayer and thanksgiving. My Christ, my love, my encircular, each day and each night, each light, each dark, be near me, uphold me, my treasure, my truth. So our first reading this evening is from the Little Book of UCB and it's about look for ways to serve others and it's from Paul's letter to the Hebrews chapter 13 verse 16. Share with others for with such sacrifices God is pleased. When Ronald Reagan was governor of California, he sometimes slipped out of his office early, telling his administrator, Michael Deaver, I have a few errands to run. Deaver became curious, so he leafed through to read file on the governor's desk, and on top was a wrinkled letter, a wrinkled letter from a man stationed in Vietnam. The soldier had written to Regan, telling him about his life in South East Asia and how much he missed his wife. That particular day was their wedding anniversary and he wanted her to know how much he loved her and longed to be with her. Although he had already sent her a card, he asked the governor if he'd make a phone call to make sure she was okay and pass on his love in case she didn't receive the card. The next day, Deaver discovered Reagan had done much more than the soldier requested. 
he picked up a dozen red roses and delivered them to the man's wife. Dale Rowie, the governor's driver, told Deaver that Reagan approached the woman with an extremely humble attitude and offered the flowers on behalf of a loving husband stationed in a jungle hell on the other side of the world. Then he spent over an hour with her drinking coffee and talking about her family. Reagan's humility may in fact have been one of the secrets to his enduring popularity. Somebody said to be humble to superiors is duty, to equals courtesy, to inferiors nobility. It's not big deeds but small acts of kindness that make us great as God counts greatness. With such sacrifices, God is pleased. Let us just reflect on those beautiful words. It takes a lot of courage to put yourself out and do a good deed for someone who rattles your cage, annoys you intensely, or maybe has deceived you. But the moment the Lord places something on your heart, you acknowledge it, you respect it, and you carry it out. But many go into the head, they procrastinate, they cogitate, they deliberate, and before long, their request has been lost in man's ego. So if you feel a stirring in your heart or an inner voice guiding you to do something that the head is telling you is nonsense <clears throat> or irrelevant or not important, then you've missed the opportunity to do something truly great for God. I remember a few years ago, I would be busy writing one of my manuscripts and I'd get this strong sensation to pick up the phone and dial a certain number. When I spoke to the person at the other end, they said, how did you know to ring me? And I said, I didn't. What do you mean? I said, I just became aware that I had to phone you. And the reply on the other side was, well, I'm so glad you did because I'm bereft. I'm going through a really difficult time. But initially, I was getting a little bit bad tempered with myself. Well, I'm in the middle of a manuscript. Why have I got to ring this person? Could it not wait till I finished? And the reply always was, do it now. Do it now. So I take my hat off to Donald Reagan to Ronald Reagan and to those in service to God who can put their brothers and sisters first and who can wait on them in the Lord's name because it takes a lot of courage today to represent a God of love, especially in a monastery or in a monastic community like ours. Because if you come from love and you do it in God's name, so many times you encounter a barrage of negative mindsets. You even have some accuse you of not representing God, but trying to score points. That's their stuff, but it hurts and it wounds. So if you are guided in your heart to share something or do something out of the ordinary. Maybe it's a next door neighbor, someone you don't particularly like. Just knock on the door, bring them a little gift. If you're making cakes or baking, give them something or leave it at the doorstep and let them guess. And as Brother Richard says, every act of love to another person is to give God to them, and I endorse that. So now, <clears throat> let's move on. 
I'm calling on the Holy Spirit now to speak to all of us here as I open this beautiful book, Jesus Now. Ah, and guess what the, the theme is or the title of this reflection? You are important. In the Christian Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 14, verse 11, we read, For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. You have been made the children of God, citizens of his kingdom, brothers and sisters, servants and disciples forever. You are God's ministers to human creatures around you. It is this that truly gives you significance and validity, each one of you. You need not, as do the cultists and non-religious therapy groups about you, continue to struggle for self-realization and identity, for some sense of meaning and purpose for your lives. You have all this and much more. Truly, you are the sons and the daughters of God. This must not, as it appears to with so many non-religious movements, result in self-exaltation. God is God. Jesus is God's Son, your Saviour and Lord. As with Christ, so with you. Your allegiance is to your dependence, sorry, your allegiance is to, and your dependence is upon the Father, Mother, God in heaven. You were created in their image, and even before your creation, Christ was with God. It is your redemption from sin and your reconciliation to your Creator and Lord that established forever your identity and personhood. It is for this reason that you can afford to keep a low profile among your peers. You do not have to be king of the hill to be more prestigious and recognized than your fellow beings. Your validity is not determined by your fellow persons. It is established by God himself. While some of God's children do receive worthy acclaim and honor, others serve as well or better as Jesus did by suffering and dying on some ignominious cross. Love deeply and walk humbly, whatever the cost, and in due time you will be exalted by your Father, Mother, God in heaven. What is that reading saying to your heart? You are important because you are a child of God. You may not feel important. You may not feel precious or loved. You may be living in a violent relationship. You may be working in a place of work where you're devalued. As many monastics are in their monasteries, where they have ruthless superiors who abuse God's will for their own selfish end. I've seen it and I've been the recipient of it, but we must never lose sight of the fact that we are loved and that in the eyes of God, we may be broken in two we may be discouraged, deflated, despondent, even suicidal. But in the eyes of God, we are important. Let us break now and play something that will bring us closer to the Lord. Bear with me now. Thank you. 
Beautiful, doesn't it get rid of all the cobwebs and makes you really appreciate that we are in love with a God who loves us no matter how much we sink into the depths of our own despair no matter how many times we turn our back and walk away we are so blessed so blessed to have Jesus, the Son of God, to shepherd us, even in our darkest hour. So let us just be still for a moment as we allow the Lord Christ to speak to each one of us and touch us. Let us be still. Let us be still and know that God is among us. Amen. <clears throat> and now, 
we just carry on with our next reading, which is from Epistles now. And again, I'm opening it at random. We are thankful for the family of God, the followers of Christ, who are faithfully laboring within his purposes. Some of them are on the front lines in positions of great risk to health and life. Others are quietly and profoundly pursuing God's objectives in places and in ways unknown to us. We applaud our brothers and sisters and pray that God will grant them much joy and fill them with his power as they strive to advance God's kingdom. Their devotion to our Lord, their dedication to the needs of people, or to shame us in our lethargy and encourage us in our times of depression and urge us on toward a more radical obedience to our Lord and Master. It is obviously not our primary concern to be popular with the people with whom we deal, even though we are charged with the task of loving and serving them. We are first and foremost here to please God, to serve him, and this may not earn for us the commendations of the crowd. It will, if we are faithful, result in our Lord's condemnation. So, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> it is important, however, that we commend one another, that we encourage and support our collaborators in whatever way we can. The task is difficult. The road is rough for all of us. We need from time to time the feeling of strong loving, undergirding arms to enable us to bear the burdens of our respective ministries. Indeed, the joy and strength that comes to us in our labours will often come in our love and concern for one another. Along with our prayers on each other's behalf, let us write and speak and reach out through loving embraces to transmit messages of joy and love to our brothers and sisters about us. There are those within the Christian family who are enme enmeshed within deep conflicts and who are struggling with afflictions and burdens that are almost impossible to bear. May God grant to us the sensitivity to comprehend something of what they are going through and the urgency to demonstrate our concern for them as we hold them up before our God in prayer. And that leads us into now our evening intercessions. Excuse me. So we come now and in a moment of silence, let us be still. And whatever may be troubling us at this hour, let us name it because it's ours. Let us bless it because we own it. And now let us release it to God in a mindset of gratitude and conclude with a simple, three-worded, powerful prayer. Thank you, God. And keep saying thank you, God, rather than repetitively asking for the same thing day in, day out. For that indicates to God that we do not trust our Father, Mother, God. And now we pray, Father, Mother, God, <clears throat> Christ pray that we be forgiven through his passion. As you accepted him, accept his prayer for all who are hurting right now. Father, Mother, God, into your hands I commend my spirit. And we say the response again, Father, Mother, God, into your hands I commend my spirit. Through his beloved disciple, Jesus gave Mary to be our mother. 
With her we pray to you for all her children, of all faiths and none. Response, Father, Mother, God, into your hands I commend my spirit. Jesus gave to us his beloved Mary of Magdala to be an inspiration for us in periods of desolation and despair. We ask that she will intercede for us with your Son and comfort us until we are one with you in heaven. Response, Father, Mother, God, into your hands I commend my spirit. Father, Mother, God, heed the anguish of those who cry out to you with your Son. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Help us to hear the cry, I thirst. Help us to see your Son, even in the least of his brothers and sisters. Response, Father, Mother, God, into your hands I commend my spirit. We pray for those who've gone before us, signed with the sign of the cross. May they rise with Christ in power when his voice resounds again and again throughout the universe. It is consummated. Response, Father, Mother, God, into your hands, I commend my spirit. And this evening I bring each one of you and I ask the Lord Christ to continue to touch you and to bless you with your family and all your loved ones. This evening we pray for our dear brother Richard, <clears throat> who's here with us, but we pray for his two dear friends back in, in France, Sister Anna and Katrina, that they will be protected, nurtured and safeguarded from harm. We pray for all the brothers and sisters of our community, especially those who've moved on to do other things for the Lord. But we pray for those who are with us and struggling, who may be going through a dark night of the soul experience, who may feel unloved, abandoned. We pray for those who are considering joining our community, that they will be touched by the power of God's love, to listen to their heart, to reclaim that heart, to honor the message and the courage from God to implement it and do God's will for their life. We pray for universal interspiritual unity and global peace, especially within all the major world religions where so many mistrust the other and we pray for those who are hurting right now especially in Mosul in the Middle East we pray for all our religious leaders including our Holy Father Pope Francis we pray for His Holiness the Dalai Lama for Thich Nhat and also for Queen Elizabeth our reigning monarch and head of the Church of England and we mustn't forget the men and women who've heard the call of God to follow him in ministry and in the monastic life. We bring them to the Lord and say, Lord Jesus, comfort them when they are in need of prayer. And for those who are discouraged, disheartened, or feel unworthy, are no longer precious in the eyes of God, that the Lord Jesus will touch them now. We pray for all our beautiful pets who bring us so much love and yet there are many of God's children who run these puppy farms and where the animal's dignity and well-being is compromised through greed. We pray for them. And we pray for those helpless little animals that are neglected, abused, ill-treated. For what? Now let us pray the beautiful prayer 
that Jesus taught us. Oh, sorry, before we say that, <clears throat> I forgot to read the message board from Brother Richard. Prayers for all families that prepare for the birth of a child. Oh, absolutely. And we pray for you, dear brother. Well, thank you, dear brother. I need prayers right now, but don't we all? But I welcome more. I'm greedy. I'm greedy. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Mother God, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us tonight our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. We forgive those who've wronged us, deceived us, misunderstood us, Protect us from the forces of evil and lead us astray from the evil one who seeks to alienate our hearts from listening to your voice and your truth. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. I'm going to open this little book of prayers. I haven't got a clue as to what prayer we're going to say. Ah, from Philip Morlock, retired fruit grower and shepherd. Dear Lord, we thank you for all the wonderful gifts of this life, for the calm and serenity of a cool moonlight night, moonlit night, and the beauty of the fields, the woods, and the countryside, and for our own senses and the ability to have to see and to appreciate all these good gifts. Above all, we thank you for the gift of children and for the joy they bring. May we never forget that they are your children also and that you have entrusted us with their care and nurturing so that they in turn may go forth to do your will in their chosen paths of life. Truly, the best things in life are free and God-given. May we also never forget those less fortunate than ourselves, that we may show compassion to them in their adversity. Amen. Wow. Thank you, Lord, for the prayer from Philip Morlock. And now we conclude. <clears throat> The blessing of heaven, the blessing of earth, the blessing of sea and sky on those we love this night and on every human family, the gift of heaven, the gift of earth, the gift of sea and sky, the gifts of brother sun and sister moon and the gifts of the animal kingdom be in your heart now and forevermore. Amen. And as we come to blow out this flame representing the presence of God, we thank the Lord Christ for touching the hearts of those whom we have remembered here at this hour. Amen. So, my dear friends, we say to you, go in peace to love and to serve our God. Namaste, Shalom, Inshallah, Paxet Bonum, Om Shanti, Sola de Caritas, Salam Alaikum, and may the peace of our God reign supreme in your heart, in your life, within your family and extended families. Amen. Thank you for giving up your time to be here. And we look forward to your company again soon. God bless.